Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. I'm going to take just a minute, let everyone hop online, and we'll get started. It is Tuesday, January 25th of 2022, and we are excited about the word um, that we have this evening. Um, we just hope that this word, um, it, it drops into your spirit, it drops into your mind and your heart throughout the day. Um, it's, we need the word because the word changes things. Encouragement. It's encouragement. Um, it's seed to the sower. It, it's seed that's dropped down um, into the, the, what's the word I'm looking for? When a seed is dropped so far down into the ground, um, it is something that has to be watered. It has to be, you know, if you're not careful, weeds will start to grow up and start to overtake it. Um, but we know that we serve a God of impossibilities. We serve a God who never fails, never sleeps, never slumbers. We serve an awesome and amazing, a wonderful, a healer, a father. We serve an almighty God. That is, I mean, I'm excited about tonight because um, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, and that's faith. And faith is not always easy. Um, a lot of times it's very hard. <laughs> we talk about faith. Um, we say we have faith. But when the rubber meets the road and we are put into a position to where faith is the only way that we're going to make it through. It can be very difficult um, to say that we have faith. And, and the Bible tells us the only amount of faith that we have to have is the mustard seed, the size of a mustard seed. And if you don't know what a mustard seed looks like, it's very, very small. And the Bible says that's all the amount of faith that we need to trust and believe in him. Exactly. You know, it's just a grain of a mustard seed. And, and it's us that makes it hard it's us that that sometimes we don't believe we don't understand but we have to live by faith yes we do especially in the time that we're living in right now you know you hear everything is is bad news everything is doom and gloom i i don't know how anyone that is without god can survive mentally in these times because everything is bad bad news sells and you know in the, in the deeper that we get into all this um as far as what we t turn on the tv and look at what we read about in the in the papers or online or whatever it is it seems like faith is 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 gone nobody has faith anymore but you know it's as i was outside today i was thinking about having faith and I want to I want to tell us I want to tell about something that's happened in our church today. Yes. Nobody um, knows this. Yes, so we're so excited you, about you, this. You go you, if you go to our church at Abiding Love Community Church, you're about to hear it for the first time. Nobody knows this except the person that it happened to, and Becky and myself, and probably the family members. And, pro and the family members. <laughs> I'm wanting to hold on to this for just a few more minutes because I want a few more people to get on because. This is something that we have been praying for. Um, there has been several pre preachers and prophets and evangelists who has come into this church who has prayed the very same prayer. And it was, I, I, I'll hold on to it for just a second. Um, but I was thinking about today, the faith. You know, we are hearing preachers out there saying, and prophets saying, and we're preaching in the pulpit, go after it. Have the faith that God's going to take care of everything. Yep. It's up to us to make the first move. That first move is to go after it, Becky. We've got to go after it, and that's the first thing. God will take care of the rest. He always says throughout his word, Ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door will be open. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and ye shall have it. It's, there's always a condition of our action that motivates God 
um, to react. God is moving in mighty ways. You know, we were when God moves, the devil is also going to try his best. Oh, we yeah. we say this every time that we get on <laughs> yes, air. Yes. But you know, we were coming to the church tonight because we wanted we're, we're trying out some new equipment. We're trying out some new lightings, and so we're trying to make this the best that we can make it. Yes. Because I believe, and Becky believes, that God wants nothing but the very best for His children, for His ministry, for everything about getting His Word out. And so that's what we're trying to do with some new lighting, some new tripods, and this, that, and the other. But as we were on our way to church tonight, we we got caught up in a horrific, horrible yes. accident. And automatically, you know, we started praying. And, you know, God take care of those that were in the accident. But, you know, by faith, I know that those people are okay. By faith, I know that they're going to live and not die. By faith, yes. I know that their family members are going to be, you know, they don't want to have to worry. It's by faith and faith alone is the only way that we can live. Because I'm going to tell you, not man, not, not man, they can't do it. It's only by the grace of God and by faith that we can live. Faith goes against the very nature of man. See, it, we're, Paul said in the Bible that we um, are fighting an internal war. It's flesh against spirit because, um, you know, it, faith, having faith in the most difficult circumstances is against the nature of man. If it looks bad, the world says it is bad. If it sounds bad, the world says it is bad. Um, it, you know, it, it's one of those things where if you say, um, if it quacks <coughs> like a duck, walks like a duck, well, must be a duck. Must be a duck. <laughs> but that's contrary to the word of God. Because God said um, that nothing is impossible with him. What's impossible? Nothing. So what you're trying to say is by faith, anybody, I mean anybody can be healed. Exactly. By faith, anybody can be risen from the dead. Amen. By faith, we can have the things that God wants us to have. Exactly. So what you're saying by faith, what's impossible? Nothing is impossible. Mm. It does not matter what you are facing. One more time. By faith. Nothing okay. is impossible. It doesn't matter what you're facing, what report or news you get. Um, you know, it, it, it's like a little kid on Christmas morning. We are anxious to tell of the goodness of God, the good news that we receive today, because man cannot get this glory. Man cannot get this glory. That is what's so um, astounding about this. It's the fact that God did exactly what he said he could do, he would do, and that he was more than able to do. You know, we were, we were discussing back and forth, what should we talk about tonight? What should we talk about? And we were kind of going back and forth, back and forth. But when the news came in, as we were getting ready to come over here, that was confirmation about what we had to speak on tonight. Yeah. Faith changes faith changes your whole perspective. Faith changes your um, your whole outlook. Faith moves mountains. We've all heard that. Faith can move mountains. Um, yes, it can. But when you actually encounter it, when you see it, when you hear about it, I don't know about you, but when I heard the news today, my faith level soared. Not that I didn't believe before, but it adds to the, the faith that you already have when you hear that God moved for somebody that was totally impossible. That's the kind of God we serve. You know, Becky, we have some friends in Nashville, Tennessee, who has a son that is pretty much on life support. And they're going by faith knowing that he is healed. Yes, even when it looks bad. And they even, they even had a sermon Sunday about the very same thing that we're talking about. And then they put it on Facebook on 
Sunday afternoon. I listened to it yesterday. Listen to it again today. Me too. And the Holy Spirit had filled that house. Mm-hmm. And to know who this person is in his ministry, he's going to be healed. Yes. He's going to be healed. And because of the faith that his dad, who is also a pastor, a prophet, evangelist, he prays, he seeks after God, he has faith that his son's going to be healed. But I want to read, and then I want you to read your, your translation before we give this news, just because I want who is watching to hear what the Bible says about faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it says, But without faith... It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe, believe it that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, in the, the Passion Translation, because we, we like to get the comprehension. We like to get the, the, the whole well-rounded um, effect of the scriptures. Because it really just opens our eyes. The Passion Translation of Hebrews 11 and 6 says, And without faith living within us, it would be impossible to please God. So if we don't have the faith in us, that right there is, it says it's what? We cannot please God if we it's don't impossible. have the faith working in and living in us. For we come to God in faith, knowing that He is real. And that he rewards the faith of those who passionately seek him. Passionately seek him. That's what God's after. We, he is wanting us to pa be passionate. You know, we can be passionate about everything else in the world. We can be passionate about our jobs. We can be passionate about, you know, baseball games, football games. We can be passionate about, you know, these, the younger generation and playing video games. But God's wanting us to be passionate for Him. Yes. And there's many things that we can be passionate over. Look back, um, you know, over um, your childhood, over your um, children, your grandchildren. Maybe it's you're watching them play sports and you get excited when you see them excel and, and um, growing in these different areas. You may be a sports fanatic. Um, you know, we just witnessed... Um, for you, um, all of the Georgia Bulldog fans out there, go dogs! Um, that was <coughs> specifically for my cousin who's watching. Um, <laughs> we just witnessed them um, winning the national championship. Okay, and that was great, and that was that was wonderful. But after a few days, that feeling fades. But what remains after all is said and done? The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. They are forever. Okay, so we have waited 13 minutes. Yeah, I, I think and we've I'm, made them wait long I'm, enough. I'm done waiting. <laughs> so by these scriptures, what this is saying is we must have faith. You've got to have faith to make it. And we have a lady that goes to our church. And when she started coming here, she had cancer. Yes. And she had cancer in her... She had cancer in her liver. She had cancer in her pancreas. So, and, and when she started coming here, we started praying. Mm -hmm. And we had a revival. Mm -hmm. And that... The guy that was come and spoke prayed. Then we had another revival. Yes. And there was another guy that prayed. And then we have continued to pray. And I'm going to tell you, we use this stuff right here. It's anointing oil. And, and we continue to pray. And we continue to have the faith. And we continue to seek after God's healing in this lady. And we believed. When we prayed, every time we believed. And then it gets better. Because then the doctors say, there's nothing else that we can do. This is, this is our last resort. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I even told this person standing from the pulpit, thank you, Jesus, that they have given all that they can give up and we're done, you know, there's nothing else. 
Now it's time for Jesus to step in. Now it's time to G for Jesus to show up and show out. And Jesus, when he shows up and when he shows out, by faith, there's what they call a healing process that comes along. Yes. And so when we got the text today, what did the text say, Becky? I was actually driving down the road. And yes, I know <laughs> that you're not supposed to pay attention. We hope no police officers are watching. <laughs> but you know, this is the kind of news that, I mean, I was crying. By the time that I read this, I, I was just so excited and so happy. She had said, saw my doctor this morning, got the, new, uh, the, the doctor report back. They said that the cancer on her pancreas is shrinking and the cancer on her liver is either totally wiped out or so small that the scan could not even pick it up that her blood work was good, that everything about it was good. Don't you tell me, you go get me excited here. Don't tell me God cannot heal you. Don't tell me that, that anything is impossible with God because my God saves, my God heals, my God delivers and sets free and there is nothing impossible with him. You know, I think about it now, and Sunday so, during the service, we were singing a song. What's the name of that song that we were singing there at the end? I Speak Jesus. I Speak Jesus. Yes. And I walked over to this lady, and I said, when the doctors say that that's all they can do, what do you do? And she, in the microphone, said, speak Jesus. Speak Jesus. See, this lady has such an amazing faith. And she knows that God is in the process of healing her. Yes. There is no spot on her liver whatsoever. There's... That's the reason they couldn't find it. And the spot in her pancreas is shrinking so much, it's so fast, that the next time she goes back, it's, if it's even there, it's going to be so small. And then the next time they'll say, it won't, I, we can't even see it. I, don't under, I can't explain it. I don't know what's going on. But she'll tell them by Jesus. And let me tell you, tell you this. I was so happy to hear this news because God gets every ounce of glory. God, God gets it all. He, it is by his stripes that we are healed. And this is only the beginning. God spoke that to me. I was so happy when I was driving down the road. I said, God, thank you for healing her. God, thank you that you came through and you said every bit of what you're going to do. He spoke to me driving down the road. He said, this is only the beginning because we have prayed and said, God, we believe you. We believe against the report of the enemy. We believe that you will heal and you will do what you say you will do. But God, we now are, are, are entering into a season where we want to see right now miracles. We want to see creative miracles. We want to see the impossible become possible. And it's happening. It's and it's going to happen. Because, see, we are stepping into this new year. And for the next few years, the impossible is going to be the possible. Because you're not, this, this is just a little taste. Church, a body yes. love community church, if you're watching, this is just a little bit of a taste of what's to come. Because, see, in foreign countries, they have such amazing faith. I've, I've, I've been, I've done missionary work and I've, I've went and witnessed firsthand that the faith that these people have. They have the faith that when somebody dies, God will raise them from the dead. That's happening, and yes. it's going to happen right where we are at. See, we, we're, we're in a different realm now because, see, it's up to us. I'm going to be preaching if God allows me to on Sunday. <laughs> I'm going to be preaching about binding up the devil because, see, you know, God gives us the authority. And see, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That's what we've got to get up with. See, mm -hmm. that's part of our faith. Getting up and putting on that armor of God is part of our faith. Knowing that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. 
nothing, no one, no demon in hell is going to come against me. Mm-hmm. You know, when that demon ra- raised his, his nasty head in front of you, we have the faith to speak against that devil, put him back in his place and say, get out of here. Get away from me. I don't want to know you. I don't want to see you. I don't want anything to do with you in Jesus name. See, in this new year, Becky, I'm telling you, I'm ready to have church tonight. <laughs> We're going to open the doors and, and have everybody come in. But there's going to be people raised from the dead. Yes. As impossible to as me. that sounds. It sounds crazy to the, to the world. It sounds crazy and impossible. But we serve a God that says, let me, let me just show you a little bit of what I can do. This death has no authority over me. This death, this, this spirit of death has no um, authority or dominion over me. Because we talked about last week, didn't we talk about the tide of battle turning? You want to talk about a, a Holy Ghost shout? <laughs> when I heard that again today, um, before I heard the, the good news, and it was a, a, a turning of the tides. I said, God, you spoke that so clear to us last week. A, a turning of the tides. The, there's, um, there's a change coming, a turning coming to where it, it's not going to be as if Satan is prevailing any longer. Now the tides are turning. The, the battle is turning into our favor. And now we will come out with a loud shout and with the spoil of the enemy better than we did when we first entered into battle. That loud shout. You know, Becky, I don't know if you remember. I, I, you've got to remember. But a year ago, we stood in, in Nashville on a line. And yes. as we stood in line, there was a man who had a heart attack in line and fell. And they, they said he was dead. Yeah. And the pastor and his wife and some other people came out into the, where this man was at in the line. And they started praying. Mm-hmm. And they began to pray. And they began to put uh, anointing oil on him. And then they started just, I mean, everybody started laying their hands on him. And this man got up. He had a heart attack, pronounced dead, got Mm -hmm. up, walked into the church, sat down and had church service. Yes. Was healed from any kind of heart disease that he would ever have from there on out. Enjoyed the service, praised and worshiped, and left there a changed, a new man. With no heart problems. That's what we're about to go into. Yes. That's the season that the church and the ministry and God's people and prophets and evangelists and all God's children is about to walk into in this new year. All God wants is our obedience. All he wants us to do is, is say, yes, Lord, send me wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, and whatever you want me to speak, I will do it. All he is wanting is a willing vessel. After the willing vessel, just believe that he is. We just read it, that that they that come to God must believe that he is. What are you asking God for? What are you needing God to do for you? It may be salvation of loved ones. It may be your own salvation. It may be deliverance. It may be healing. It may be repairing relationships. It may be... Um, you know, restoring finances. We know because it's in his word. God says, I am a restorer. I, I will give back and restore back everything that Satan has stolen from you. And that gives me hope because I don't know about you. Satan has stolen quite a few things from me. He has stolen and he has robbed me of things that I'll, I'll admit that some of the things that he stole from me, I allow, I backed up and I allowed him to, to just come in and take them. But in this new year, there is a remnant, those which remain, who is sick and tired of Satan coming in and stealing and robbing from them. He's tired of... Uh, we're, we're tired of him robbing us of our joy, robbing our peace, robbing us of our health, robbing us of our peace of mind. And you know, when you get pushed back into a corner, what happens? 
You got to come out fighting. <laughs> you got to come out fighting. You got to come out swinging. And that, I believe, is where God has allowed the church to get to. That his remnant is going, there, there is a stirring in the, the spirit of the church that those that really mean business with God, those that are really obedient to the, to the voice of God, and <coughs> who says, God, whatever you have me to do, I don't care how crazy it sounds, I don't care how crazy it looks, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. And because of that, because our ministry is that of, you know, call us crazy, call us what you will, but now we are seeing the work and the, the fruit of our labor, the fruit of our faith. Our ministry is growing. Our ministry has, we've been a ministry for five years, going on five years. Yes. And in five years, you know, when we opened the doors here at the church, the very first service, I just knew, I just knew as soon as those doors were gonna open, every seat in there would be full. And when we opened the doors, there was eight or 10 people here. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Lord, have mercy, what are we gonna do? But God, see, we wasn't ready. But God has slowly changed and shifted some things in this ministry. And now we are going full 100 miles an hour straight ahead as fast as we can. Yes. See, what we're looking for in our ministry is growth. What we're looking for, because with growth, people are being healed. With growth, people being saved. With growth, things are, are changing. See, we ask God to put us in a community where we could help people. Yes. Because every one of us need help. Every one of us Amen. need a stronger faith with God. Yes. See, and, and we have been put in a place. See, I want these doors of this church to be open every single day. Not just on Sunday. Not just on Wednesday. I want us to have activities. I want us to open up schools. I want us to open up a Bible college. I want us to open up daycare. I want us to have things for this community. I want these doors open every single day. Because see, in this new year, these new times that are, that, that are here, and they're here for a season, God's moving. And we're going to have to have a church that's going to stand on a solid rock. Yes. On a solid rock. Solid rock. On solid pillars that's going to teach the truth and preach the truth. Because, see, this ain't a watered-down mm -hmm. watered church. See, we believe that when we preach, we preach the whole Bible. We, we preach that there is evidence of speaking in tongues. Yes. We, we do preach that when you put oil on people, that it, it means something. We, when we preach, we have the faith that God is going to heal that person. It's been living proof today. We have seen blinded eyes open. We have seen people walk. We have seen cancer fall from people. We have seen people delivered from some things. Mm -hmm. We have seen drug addictions leave people's lives because they trust in Him. See, this is the day and hour that we must get to as Christians. Not, you know, we don't come to church anymore to warm seats. Those days are over. Coming to our comfortable churches, you're coming to the wrong place if you come here. We don't like comfort. We <laughs> no, like growth. Was, we like moving. We like to see healing going on. We like to see praying. We like to, we love to see some preaching going on. See, these, this is the realm that we're going, but by faith. And to the natural eye, it may look impossible. You may say, how in the world are you going to have a, a school? How in the world are you going to expand in the ministry? How in the world are you going to expand out and up? That's what God spoke to us several times, out and up. How in the world are you going to do that? Because we serve a God who already has everything Orchestrated, And you keep saying how in the world. It's not in the world. It's not in the world. It's Jesus. He, he has everything. Before the world was created, he was. Before our troubles came, he was. Before the answer comes, he is. And before, um, you know, anything, any attack of Satan. Because Satan is going <coughs> to fight you tooth and nail to make you believe that what you are facing is even too difficult for God. 
That's what he, he will do. He will try to convince you that what you are facing is so hard that even God himself cannot heal you, cannot set you free, cannot save you, cannot turn things around. Well, I beg to differ um, because the God I serve, the God I serve, says all you got to do is have faith as a grain of mustard seed. That, that um, you know, now the just, Hebrews 10 and 38 says, now the just shall live by faith. We have to not just speak it. We got to live it. We've got to walk in it. We got to say no matter how bad it looks, no matter how difficult, if we go out there and we preach to empty chairs, we're going to preach as if there are thousands of people out there because the Bible tells us, speak the things that are not as though they are. We are believing for people to come flooding in. Not just, um, you know, we, we don't want the, the, um, the people who, you know, Jesus even turned the tables in the synagogue and, and he called the religious people vipers. But you know what? There are a people who've been rejected by every, even cr other Christians. They have been rejected and put on the back burner. They have been um, downtrodden and they have not been helped at all. And they feel hopeless. And we've prayed, God, send us the hopeless. Send us the helpless. Send us the unsaved. Send us the ones that are on their, on their deathbed. Lord, send us the one who who they've tried everything else. Send us the, the addicts, the drug addicts, the alcoholics. Send us the prostitutes. Send us all of these people that the world and the other, uh, even the church, the church has done such a poor job. Um, not all churches, but there are some churches who only care about money. They only care about increasing themselves. We're not that church. We are very fearful of doing something that is outside of God's will and outside of, of the commandments of God. But in that, in that careful walk with him, in that careful obedience, and, and in order to do that, we have to stay in such a, a tight-knit relationship with God to where we can hear his small, still voice. And as he leads us, we know, even during the middle of the night, when we wake up, God will direct us to Pray for people. Pray for those that we've met even once or twice. There's something in that midnight hour. You know, it, it never, ever has God ever woken me up in the midnight hour to pray for somebody. And when I go back to sleep, I wake up tired. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how God works. But see, there's something about our mind being clear. And when God wants to talk to us, it's in the midnight hour because it's clear. And we have that precious time with him. You know, there's many nights that I get up and I'll walk around the living room and I'm pacing and I'm praying for people. Becky will get up and she's walking around the living room in our bedroom and she's praying for people. See, there's something that we have got to change as a Christian body. See, we got to take religion out of it. Mm -hmm. Religion is a, is, is a dead thing. Religion is, is for the dead. You know, what, we're, what we need to think about is what are we doing? For God, you know, we talk about having faith that God's going to bring these people. God's already started bringing these people. Mm -hmm. But see, we were those same people. Mm -hmm. And we were looking for somebody to love on us. We were looking for a church to go and worship him. We were looking, we were looking for something. There was a void there, and we knew that that closeness, we, we felt like we were roaming in the wilderness, just as the children of Israel had done, Think, you know, saying, God, why did you leave us, lead us in such a dry place? Well, I can tell you, we've been on the mountaintop with God, we've been in the deepest, darkest valleys with God. Either way, God has never changed. The same God that was in, on the mountaintop with us was the same God who walked with us hand in hand, sometimes even carrying us in the deepest, darkest <coughs> valley. So whatever happens, whatever circumstance you face, 
People around you may tell you, you might as well go ahead and give up. You might as well, God um, is, it, God's not going to want you um, to do this. You need to give up and let loose and let go. I beg to differ with you because the Bible says that, that with God, all things are possible. These people that are talking negative, negatively in your ears, whether it be people that you know are complete strangers, they didn't die on that cross for you. But there is somebody who died on that cross for you who opened the, the floodgates of heaven that said, I'm on my way back for a bride that is without spot or wrinkle. We've got to get ready and in preparation for the return of our Lord and Savior. And so what does without spot or wrinkle mean? We've got to faith up. We have to know that you 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 know. That you know that you know that, that you know. know. Without doubt, without question, that if God said he will do something, he is going to do it. And he's going to do it 100%. Never once has God only halfway done something. He does it, and he does it 100%. I'm going to tell you, we are looking for a church, for a perfect church. Everybody's out there looking for a perfect church. <laughs> Never. There is no such thing. Never I was driving down it. the road, and I actually saw a church that said the perfect church, and that was the name of the church. And I thought to myself, that would be the last place that I would go. <laughs> there is no perfect church, but what I can tell you is, if you are not in a church, you need to get to one, and you need to get to one quick. But you need to get to a Bible-believing, preaching church that's going to preach to you the truth. If, you are look, if you're in a church that's not preaching the truth and preaching the Bible, you run as fast as you can. If you're in a church that's not preaching about healing, the anointing oil, things like that, deliverance, you need to get out of that church. I'm not telling you... I, I'm just saying. Number one, we you don't, need to pray about it. We don't live in the time that we used to live. Amen to that. We are not playing church anymore. See, because we are entering in that last great movement of God. And God is coming back, just like Becky was talking about. Yeah. And when he comes back, it's going to be like that. We need to make sure that we're ready. We need to make sure that, that we are in the place that God wants us to be in. Because honestly, right now, we all have room to grow. We all need to, to get in our faith realm. We all need to be praying and seeking after God yes. more and more every day. Yes. And if you're not spending time in your Bible, if you're not spending time with God daily, you may want to get to an altar. You know, I can't go a day without spending time with God. I can't go a day without reading His Word. I can't go a day without stretching my soul and my mind and my heart to what God has for me. Because when that day comes, you might as well put me in the ground. Because it's over. There's a, a craving and a hunger for more of the presence of God. Because if you've ever experienced the presence of God, you'll never want anything else. Nothing else will satisfy you. Once you've tasted, you know, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you, That makes me think of, um, you know, a, a, a piece of cake that is your absolute favorite. That when you... Um, put maybe it's chocolate cake or something when you put it in your mouth it is the best thing that you've ever tasted okay that's a small small comparison to what God is he said taste and see that the Lord is good because when you taste of him nothing else is going to satisfy you nothing else is going to be like it there may be imitators there may be mockers there may be um, decoys even but only God can satisfy your soul. And we just want to um, pray with you. Um, before we do, Shane, you want to tell them about the, the oil and the prayer cloth? We have already had people <clears throat> contacting us in the church yes. and our ministry about the prayer cloths um, and, the oil, and the anointing oil. But we have these prayer cloths, and we pray over these. And this basically is a symbolic... Uh, piece of cloth that 
you can put in your pillowcase, your loved one's pillowcase, anything that they're needing prayer for or yourself. These have been anointed. This is a very, I mean, I know it's just a purple piece of cloth, but the anointing that comes behind this yes. because this is, this is God. And if you would like to have one of those, they're free of charge. Becky will give you the information in a minute. And then we have this bottle of anointing oil, which is also free of charge. You can cook with it because it is it's olive oil. Olive oil. Mm -hmm. And um, you can put this on yourself. You can put this on your loved ones. Even those that you don't want them to know, you just <laughs> go by them. Just tap them on the back of the head. But this is free. But we have prayed over this. This is holy anointing oil. <clears throat> I didn't say this last week, but I believe I did the week before. We have a, a pretty big bottle in our on our platform. And we have used it, and we have used it, and we have used it, and we used it again Sunday. And, I, you know, we just keep pouring it in our hand. <laughs> and it never seems to get any lower. Yeah. I mean, it's staying right there at the top. And now that it is, it has run over the top, and now it's on our, our pulpit, and I've told everybody, keep it, keep it on there. Don't, don't dry it up because that's holy. Keep that oil saturated into that pulpit. But if you would like to have one of these, all you have to do is email us. We now have a post office box. Yes. But if you would like to have one of these, just email us. You have that, e that information? Yes. The, if you want um, the prayer cloth and or the oil, you can, you can request both. Just let us know. Um, what you would like and how many, um, you can email us at rofministries2021 at gmail.com. That's rofministries2021 at gmail.com. Or you can write to us. If you want um, to write us, uh, you can certainly email it. But for those that do not have email or, or just wish to have um, something handwritten, you can write to us. <coughs> Remnant of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 481, Orchard Hill, Georgia, 30266. That's P.O. Box 481, Orchard Hill, Georgia, 30266. And we are going to pray um, because I believe that whether it's those watching or even those that may watch later, um, Prayer changes things, and so we want to pray over you and over your situation um, because God is opening the floodgates. He's, uh, he's showing um, the world. He's showing the church. He's showing the unbeliever who he is. And so we are going to pray um, right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Yes. Lord. God, we thank you for every every good and bad thing, Lord, because, Lord, we, we know that we have come this far by faith because of your hands. And, Lord, we thank you. We humble ourselves before you, God, and know that we are nothing. But, God, we know that you are everything. And, God, we just ask that, Lord, if there be one that is watching, Lord, that, that is listening to this broadcast, God, if they do not know you and they do not have a personal relationship, Lord, we ask that you tug at their hearts. God, that they would make it right with you and they would not delay another second because, God, we know that time is short and we are not promised another day. Yes. Lord, we know that you hear of people dropping like flies. They, death is all around us. But, God, you said that you came to give us life and life more abundantly. And God, we just ask if there be any that are watching that or know of people, God, that are sick. Lord, you went to that cross and you bore the stripes on, on your back for our healing. God, I ask that you send the word. Lord, we are a firm believer that, that if they're not in front of us to lay hands on them, we can speak the word and send it forth. Yes, and your angels will carry it to those that need it. God, those that are sick and suffering, God, we ask that you cover them with a blanket of healing. Let your healing virtue flow throughout their bodies, God. 
creative miracles, Lord, those that may have cancer. God, we ask that you just erase cancer from their bodies yes. and it never return. God, yes. those that are suffering with COVID and any kind of variant, God, we ask that your your healing power and virtue collide with this yes. infirmity, causing it to back up, let loose, and run away and never return. Yes, Lord, Lord, we thank you in advance for their healing. God, we thank you for the deliverance of every addict, Lord, of every addiction that would try to take hold of your people. God, we cover it by the blood of the Lamb, Lord, and Lord, let them walk out with such a strong testimony for you. And Lord, let them be able to lead others to you. And Lord, those that are hanging on to the hem of your garment, Lord, those that are struggling day after day, Lord, they're having trouble just in simple things. Lord, those that are, are battling depression, Lord, those that are anxious and, and are suffering from anxiety. God, we come against those spirits of depression and anxiety. And Lord, we cover them by your word, by your blood, and by your power. And Lord, we decree that they are, they are set free. They are made whole because your word says whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Yes. And Lord, we ask that you be with each and every person, Lord. Let these, these broadcasts hit the very people who need you, who need to hear your, in, your word and, and the encouragement through you, God. And Lord, let us be quick and careful to give you every ounce of praise. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now listen, if you are looking for a church that you would like to come to, and call your home church. If you'd like to come to a church that's growing by leaps and bounds, if you're looking for a church that preaches the truth, if you're looking for a church that believes in healing, we are at 1370 North McDonough Road in Griffin, Georgia. Our phone number is... 770-828-5888. And the church's name is Abiding Love Community Church. We would love to see you. We'll talk to you next Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. God bless you. We love you.